Compared to most CAF manufactured new builds in the UK, the Class 197 diesel trains have had a smooth introduction, from delivery to mainline testing and eventual entry into passenger service. Now that their sphere of operation has increased into cross-border services between England and Wales, I decided to give these a go and see what they were like. Spoiler alert, they're a far cry from the Class 158 and 175 trains they're replacing. So, let's get the show on the rails and find out why. We start today's journey at Manchester Airport, located in the Ringway area of Greater Manchester. The station opened in May 1993 to coincide with the opening of the airport's second terminal on the same day. Despite its recent opening, the station has been refurbished and upgraded multiple times, but more on that later. For now, let's enter the station and take a look around. For now, we can admire the modern designs that accompany the airport, including the statue upstairs of Trafford-born John Alcock, installed in Terminal 1 in 1964 to commemorate the first non-stop flight across the Atlantic. Our area of concern, however, is on the lower level where the platforms are located. As with most UK stations nowadays, ticket barriers are in operation to access the platforms. As well as Transport for Wales, Manchester Airport is also served by Northern and TransPennine Express, the former providing regional services across the northwest of England, and the latter of whom manage the station and provide its intercity services all across the north. The Manchester Metrolink also serves Manchester and its suburbs and has done so as part of the 2014 rebuild of the station to add the tram platforms, providing greater links in and around Greater Manchester. There is also a waiting room in between platforms 2 and 3, containing vending machines and a cafe. However, these proved rather expensive, likely due to the many tourists passing through the station, so I opted out of buying this time. And after enough waiting around, here comes our train which is formed of two Class 197 diesel multiple units, arriving from Thandidno in North Wales. A total of 77 of these trains are on order from Spanish manufacturer CAF for transport for Wales as part of their full fleet replacement strategy, with the order being split into 51 two-car and 26 three-car units. The main manufacturing of the units is taking place in Biasain, Spain, with the final assembly conveniently being done in Newport, South Wales. 21 of the two car units will have ETCS equipment fitted for use on the Cambrian line in mid Wales, whilst 14 of the three car units will be fitted with first class as part of the service upgrades on the Manchester to South Wales route. The units are expected to operate all over the Transport for Wales network, with some exceptions replacing the Class 150, 153, 158 and 175 diesel trains. As can be seen, our train is in a four carriage consist which is two two-carriage sets coupled together, which Transport for Wales aimed to do more of as more 197s are introduced. The units were first introduced between Flandidno and Blanai Festinog in November 2022, and since the December 2022 timetable change, their sphere of operation has increased the majority of routes to and from North Wales. Once further units have been handed over to Transport for Wales and crew training is complete, they will be gradually introduced on routes in Mid and South Wales. Right, time to board and take a look around whilst it's still quiet. As to be expected, the interior is very clean given these specific units only entered traffic a few days prior to this trip. Seating is also in a 2x2 two two configuration with tables and unlike the Class 175 and Class 158 units, the doors are much wider for faster boarding and alighting. I do like the open gangways on these units, enabling easier movement throughout the train. However, the elephant in the room is that there is only one toilet on board. And yes, this is the same for the three car units. Compare this to Class 175 trains, which have three toilets on board. Also, what's with this huge galley taking up around a quarter of the train? A bit unnecessary when a second toilet or more seating could have been added instead. Second toilet preferred, of course. The end gangways are open between units, enabling free movement throughout the train. And with that comes an end to the walkthrough. I'm going to move back to the front of the train now to take my seat, as British logic always is to board from the rear. And with that, let's take a look at our route for today. The Class 197 pair I'm on now is bound for Flandidno Junction. We first make a stop at East Didsbury, 
before stopping at the central Manchester stops of Piccadilly and Oxford Road. We then ride the original Liverpool to Manchester Railway as far as Earlstown, where we then rejoin the West Coast Main Line at Warrington Bank Quay. The home stretch is on the Manchester to Chester line via Runcorn East, Frodsham and Helsby before our train drops me off at Chester at around quarter to twelve. Right, it's now time to take these new trains for a spin. So, let's get rolling. Our first stop, and only stop on the style line out of Manchester Airport, is East Didsbury. As with Manchester Airport, there is an interchange with the Manchester Metrolink, albeit the Metrolink station is located a few minutes walk from here. I feel now's a good time to get onto the important stuff, so let's do a know your seat. Transport for Wales tweeted, and I quote, We have taken some lessons from the IETs and tried to make the seats more comfortable. Minus slightly more padding, these Fanes and Sophia's are unfortunately as uncomfortable as the IETs. Unlike the sister class 196 units in operation with West Midlands trains, there are armrests present, which are foldable in the middle and on the aisle sides, but not on the window side. This slightly makes up for the poor seat choice in the spec. I'm also sad to say that despite the good seat pitch, the legroom overall is ruined by the seat support, a common flaw with calf designs. One feature I do like about the seats is the foldable tray, which features grooves for cups and is extendable for the placement of phones or laptops, although it was rather stiff to operate. Needless to say, as you can see, I did make great use of this throughout the rest of the trip. Power and USB sockets are present at each seat, as indicated by the labels, although unlike the trains in Transport for Wales fleet that they're replacing, even the Class 150s and Class 153s, there is only one as opposed to the expected two, although there are two USB sockets. The tables seem to be okay and are topped off with a wooden design as with most modern units. The most annoying feature was the passenger information screens, which weren't synchronised with the system properly and were shown as not in service for the whole trip, despite the announcements playing in the background, which isn't helpful for those who have hearing impairments. There also appears to be coat hangers located both next to the window as well as on the seat itself. However, the former appears to be more secure than the latter. Electronic seat reservations are present just above the windows. However, since the COVID-19 pandemic, I don't think I've actually seen Transport for Wales use seat reservations on their express services. In the event this fails, there's a reservation card holder located at the top of the seat. As we rejoin the West Coast Mainline branch on our approach to Manchester Piccadilly, Longsight Depot can be seen in the background, which is where Avanti West Coast maintains its Pendolino fleet and where Transpennine Express maintains its Nova 2 and Nova 3 fleets, also built by the 197's manufacturer, CAF. Manchester City's Etihad Stadium can also be seen in the background on the approach into central Manchester. Our next station call is Manchester Piccadilly, arguably the busiest and most impressive station on today's route, which saw around 20 million passengers in 2022. Transport for Wales also provides services to South and West Wales from the main station concourse, albeit now on much nicer Mark IV sets alongside the existing Class 175 fleet, which will eventually be replaced by the Class 197s in due course. 
We will avoid the main shed, sadly, as we instead call at one of the only two through platforms, although we do have a spectacular view of the 1860s built main shed in its full glory. Doesn't it look amazing? A mere minute later through central Manchester, then sees us arrive at our next stop of Manchester Oxford Road, which is located right in the heart of the infamous Deansgate Castlefield Corridor, perhaps one of the most congested railway bottlenecks in the country that has been responsible for many delays and cancellations on services in and out of Manchester, the most notable example being the May 2018 timetable change, owing to the also called Link service expansion. As we arrive, do take note of the visually similar Class 331, also built by CAF, as an electric variant of the Class 195, which excluding the visual cab front is very similar to the Class 197 we're on right now. However, that's a subject for a future video. In the meantime, we then shortly pass the station of Deansgate itself. We now join the Liverpool to Manchester via Chat Moss Line, which forms part of the former Liverpool to Manchester Railway, the world's first intercity railway, built by George Stevenson in the 1830s. Recent line upgrade works have increased the line's top speed from 75 to 90 miles an hour, which is 10 miles an hour slower than the Class 197's top speed of 100. It was around this point where I began to notice the unit's rather rough and poor ride quality. However, if the Class 195's are anything to go by, this should hopefully be resolved in due course. This comes despite us currently running over Chat Moss, a large peat bog covering an area of over 10 square miles with depths ranging from 24 to 30 feet. An infamous area in railway history, the bog could have ultimately grinded construction of the line to an unexpected halt, owing to the nature of its terrain. George Stevenson, however, came up with the unique idea to effectively float the line by sinking layers of bound heather and branches into the bog after which layers of tar and rubble were added to provide a solid foundation for the line's construction, which has proved effective given trains 25 times the weight of the rocket, the line's original steam locomotive, frequently traverse the line daily and not one has sank yet. Following a call at Newton Le Willows, we diverge off the Chat Moss line at Earlstown, where we begin to join the West Coast Main Line. Whilst the Chat Moss route was fully electrified in 2015, the line between Newton the Willows and Earlstown has been electrified since 1973 for electric mail trains. Both stations not seeing an actual passenger carrying electric train served them for 42 years. As I've mentioned previously, one of the many flaws with the Class 197 is that there is only one toilet on board, which is PRM compliant. So let's go check it out. Right, door locked, and we can begin. Naturally, it's immaculate inside owing to it being a brand new train. Rather spacious and even includes a baby change ramp, as with all accessible toilets these days. However, it does have a strange handle and way of opening. There are also two coat hangers located in the toilet. One just above, and one below next to the open button. As for the tap, the soap is well stocked, as can be seen by my poor aim with the dispenser. However, the tap was only shown to dispense a little bit of water at a time, which was disappointing, especially when trying to wash off the soap. The dryer took a while to get going, however, once it was working, it was perfectly fine. Overall, I'd say the toilet was around average. The tap situation was rather disappointing. Right, now let's head back to our seat and complete the journey to Chester. Shortly after joining the main stretch of the West Coast Main Line, we arrive at our next stop at Warrington Bank Quay, one of three stations to serve the town centre of Warrington, along with nearby Warrington Central and the recently opened Warrington West. The most notable feature of the station being the Unilever factory right next to it, which was given the green light to be demolished by Warrington Borough Council in December 2022, after falling into disuse in 2020. After Warrington, we once again diverge from the West Coast Main Line, ahead of our next stop of Runcorn East. And as we call at our last stop of Helsby, I'll draw my conclusions. 
An upgrade over the Class 150s and 153s used on the Conway Valley and Borderlands lines? Absolutely. An upgrade to the Class 175s and 158s used on Transport for Wales' flagship expresses, such as Manchester to Thailand, did no? A huge no. These units had so much potential to be better, given the routes they're intended to be used on and the quality of what they're replacing, but sadly, they failed to live up to those expectations. Nevertheless, they do provide a nice ambience, as well as newer stock, which the Wales and Borders franchise so desperately needs. However, when these stocks will appear on the Manchester to South Wales route, I think I'll wait an extra hour for the Mark 4 sets now being introduced on the route. For now, however, welcome to Chester. And that's it guys, as we approach the end of the platform, we can see another 197 heading back to Manchester Airport, or at least it was intended to do so, however, as the failure of the unit cut its journey short here. Yikes. Anyways, thanks so much for coming along with me on this ride, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a like, as well as share the video, as that really helps the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications as I now upload new videos every Friday at 5pm. Right, time to catch my Avanti service onwards which is surprisingly working today. I'd also like to wish you all a belated Happy New Year. Thanks so much for watching as always and I'll see you next time.